Welcome back to Pedalbox, and on this episode, we are going to rebuild the entirety of our rear suspension, put it all back on the car, and make it fit properly. What a glorious time. It has only been seven years since we started putting this stuff together, and now we're actually going to make it fit with the correct bolts. Joyous. So as we mentioned last time, we have our trailing arms, which have all been rebuilt. We've got new bearings in so they don't wobble and rattle around. We've put all the new bits back on and they are ready to go on the car, which is fantastic news. Unfortunately, we can't put it all back together properly because, as we mentioned at the end of last episode, that bolt that holds all of these parts together and goes into the bottom of the trailing arm is a 14 mil. It's a fine pitch thread and the um, bushing inside our shock is a 12 mil. And I think the bushing in this, or not the bushing, the hole in our anti-roll bar is actually more like 10. So we have quite a bit of enlargening to do to make all of these things fit properly. Now on the TT originally, this bolt goes through, it holds just the shock. It is normal to have the coilover replace the shock entirely, because otherwise you have this stubby little spring that sits between the arm and the chassis, and that is no good if you're trying to put a coilover in, because it would be this long, and that's never going to work. So standard practice is to replace the whole unit with a coilover. Now, the arb actually goes onto the outside of that and has a twin threaded nut. So it has a 14 mil on one side that goes through with a shoulder in the shock, and then it has another smaller thread on the other end, so you can remove the arb without having to take the entire rear suspension apart. Very well designed. Unfortunately, we don't have that bolt. I'm not sure where it went when we disassembled everything, but one way or another, it's gone. So, we need to uh, make all of these parts work together properly, and that means drilling everything to the same size. Now, We've got plenty of material on the bushing in the shock. It's 18 mil. Taking an extra one millimeter off either side is not going to make any difference to that for the loads it's going to take. But if you look at the arb, that is not an enormous amount of material by comparison, considering this is fairly thin. It's only about three or four millimeters thick. So we might at some point have to reinforce this with a slightly larger plate. But for the time being, until we drill it out, put it together and then assess it, we are just gonna run with the stock anti-roll bar. That's all with the holes drilled. We can now put everything back together with our excessively heavy control arm. And that means we gotta take the exhaust off. So yes, we are once again shaving a yak and we're removing the exhaust to install the suspension. And it's not strictly speaking to install the suspension. When we built the diffuser and we enclosed in all of the back end of this, we just plated over the inside with aluminium that we've riveted on. And now we need to make the holes for the arb to actually go through. That shows exactly how long it's been since we last had the arb on this car. It's just been sat in the shed for at least 18 months, probably a little bit longer. And the easiest way to do that is to take the exhaust out so we can reference from the mounts exactly where the hole needs to go through that aluminium plate. And then we can slide the arb in from the top, which does unfortunately mean if we ever want to remove the arb, we're probably going to have to take the exhaust off because we are not as good as Audi at packaging this so that it is the minimum number of things before you have to remove parts of the car in order to extract something as simple as an arb. So exhaust retrieved, we just need to drill the two holes in our enclosure panels on the side. We know how big the, um, the side of the arb is that we need to slot through, and we have a nice big 30 mil Christmas tree cutter, and it is about 26-ish mil, but it doesn't matter, we're going to go full 30 so that we actually have enough space to waggle this around and inevitably get it somewhere off-center. Now in order to find out where that hole is, we can work out off the mounting plate. We obviously have the cross beam there that this sits up against. And conveniently, 30 mil is about the size of the entire bushing. So we're just gonna put this about an eighth of an inch off the backing edge, and we're gonna drill through at a 45 degree angle to what we actually need. And that is purely because that's the angle of the aluminum plate that we need to go into. And I don't particularly want to drill at a 45 degree angle into like a flat piece of plate like that with anything let alone a Christmas tree. 
Well, now that we've got the holes in our panels here, we can figure out how to fit this thing. Ideally, we'd be able to fit it from outside the car, so that if we ever do have to replace it, we don't have to take the exhaust and all that gubbins out. Although looking at the way that just went inside, I don't think we'll be that lucky. But it does at least go through from the wheel arch quite easily. Um, shall we see now, Aid, if we can pull it out without it coming up into the exhaust space? Yeah, give it a go. So, I am full exhaust here. Oh. So as near as I can tell, that'll go. I know it's difficult to see from where you are, but the arb stayed relatively flat on the bottom of the car, just above the diffuser, the whole way out. So with the exhaust in, it may actually still be able to go in and out for easy replacement. Well, next up, we're gonna put our coilovers in. These are gonna support the rear end of the trailing arms, which is kind of handy because they're quite big, heavy things. So this goes in first, and then we're gonna bolt it to the trailing arm so that it's fully supported. Now, when we went to do this, we noticed that our two top mounts both behave quite differently. The top mounts look a bit weird. I'm not sure if you remember in a much older episode, we had longer coilovers that came off a Mark II Golf. But now that we've got proper Caterham coilovers, we've had to extend this with a tube to actually reach the extra, extra distance. But that's not really the point. The point is, this one behaves correctly. It has a little bit of rotation around the bolting point, which is correct. And this one, for some reason, doesn't just rotate, although it doesn't rotate very much. It also moves kind of all around that way, which, so you've got a lot of kind of freedom and play in there, which you don't really want. And we took it apart again, because we'd never noticed this before somehow. I guess that's down there now. So we'll take these apart again real quick and I will show you what has happened. And it's really quite weird because these we bought as a pair and I would imagine they came off one car, but somehow we've ended up with one coilover that has a second bushing inside. So you've got the, the outer metal frame, you've got the rubber bushing, and then two metal ones of progressively smaller sizes. And on this side, there's only one in the middle, and it, this one next down to something like 12-ish mil, and this one in your right goes down to 10, which is quite weird. So that screwed us a little bit, and it means we're now going to have to take both of these 10 mil nuts off of these top mounts, send everything out to 12 mil, and weld a new nut on and all that sort of fun stuff, because we've got no way of necking this one down to 10 mil to match the other one. So once again, shaving a yak, we'll get the drill press out and get this sorted. Well, about a half hour faff later, here we are with our suspension all ready to go back together. We've replaced the nuts with larger 12 mil ones, as I mentioned. We've gone this time, instead of welding on the 10 mils like we had before, or rather instead of welding them on at all, we're using nylocks this time. It's probably important to have locking nuts on suspension because obviously th this is kind of holding the back of the car together. And obviously with nylocks, you can't weld them or you'll burn all the nylon out. So we're just going to put them on normally, clamp them together from both sides. And we should be away. We've also put a little bit of rubber skirt kind of around the bottom there, just so that not so much, it doesn't matter when it's on the car, but for us around the shop when we're moving them around, there's no like horrible rattle or anything. It'll sound a bit less cheap while we're working on it. So we're pretty much ready to put this one back together. Obviously, we've already put the uh, turret top on this one. Now, they don't go together quite so easily anymore with the rubber skirt. It's taken up a lot of the slop in there. So we need to do a little bit of, uh, let's call it percussive persuasion to get this on. The bolt is not especially keen. I think the holes are misaligned somehow. Uh, it might need to go the other way around. Oh, maybe, yeah. Ugh, typical. So with a minor problem that these bolts have been cut by hand with a grinder, so they're a bit tricky to get the nut started on, this is all now together. So if I pop the ratchet on there and Aid gets the gun on there, these are all together which means now we can finally install the top mounts into our turrets and we'll have our coilovers in place. Now that the coilovers are in, we've got something to support the rear end of these heavy trailing arms, so we're going to get those fitted in just a second. But before I do that, I'm going to jog your memory on how these little handbrake cable protector redirector things work. So you can already see the kink in our handbrake cable bowed in here where it was wrapped around that corner of the, uh, of the body into the transmission tunnel. So if I just pop this through here, it's quite nicely dimensioned, I've got to say, good work aid. So that fits all the way around to there. And now when we attach this to the back of the body, we've got a much smoother radius and the whole Bowden is supported all the way around. So that should keep everything a lot happier and distribute that friction that was previously on one little tiny part of this where it hit the corner all the way along there. So hopefully it'll make our handbrake easier to operate and it will add, add some lifetime to it. 
So we'll leave that on there for now, feed this all in and get this offered up. It's a bit tricky, so we're probably going to time lapse now. And uh, just like that, one trailing arm is in. Now to do the other one. So we've got most of the suspension reassembled. All of our upper and lower arms are in. The trailing arms are all attached at both ends and everything's, well, almost everything's looking pretty good. We're gonna run the arb through and make sure it all threads into place with all of this in place. And then, once we're done with that, he says, Yeah. Uh, round a bit. Well, clockwise or anti clock? I'm hitting the bottom of the trailing arm now. Uh, okay. Bugger. Why, where's it going? <laughs> it's just hitting the bottom because it can't rotate around enough. Right, okay. It is hitting. Can we, go, can we get to the, like, go, going almost a full turn the other way? No. Oh, yeah, nowhere near. <laughs> Okay, so it is a lower it in from inside job. No, because it still won't go through once it's been fed in there. Hmm. But we can just we can make the hole slightly bigger. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't need and much. Yeah. So you might want to say that. Okay, so that doesn't work. We need to enlarge the holes a little bit, but apart from that, this is mostly good. Unfortunately, we now have a problem with our coilovers. There's actually two problems with the coilovers, not just the one that I thought I'd spotted earlier. The first is fairly obvious when you look at the car from behind, and it's that as the coilover bolts outward toward the trailing arm, it leans out quite a lot at the bottom. Obviously the mounting point at the top is fixed, but the way the bushings and everything are set up on the ends, it needs to be directly through. So you can imagine if you move this bushing across, the coilover is kind of sitting like that on it, which makes it a little bit unhappy. It's not the end of the world, it is rubber, it'll take it up, but that's probably not perfect. The other slightly harder problem to solve is that this being a coilover, it's a fair bit kind of wider than the shock absorber that was in here at the factory. Normally the coil spring lives on a little pad about here. So with the coil spring going around the shock, it's now a lot wider and it means that as we bring it all the way out to meet the trailing arm at the bottom, the coil spring actually hits the brake caliper or the, the sort of handbrake unit on here and doesn't make it all the way snugged up to, at, at the bottom. So on this bolt on the bottom of the trailing arm, we've got to put a little spacer in just so that it's something that it can kind of wedge up to and bolt firmly in place, but without coming across so far as to hit that caliper. Now there is another bonus problem here that we'd completely missed entirely, and that is one that may occur to longtime viewers who've been around since the very beginning when we first built the suspension, who remember that we have widened this car. And it turns out when you widen the car, all right, this is going to sound really stupid, but bear with me. When you widen the car, all of the attachments for your suspension get wider with it. And the factory anti-roll bar <laughs> needs to be longer. So we now have too short of an anti-roll bar to fit all the way out to both of the anti-roll bar mounts on the trailing arms. And honestly, that is such rookie stuff. I don't know how it hasn't occurred to us, but we just noticed as we put it all together now that the arb is about that much too short on each side. Now out of the factory, these anti-roll bars did use drop links, and you can imagine kind of going from a vertical link to just sort of skewing them out a little bit and taking up some of that. But I don't really like the angles here. You know, the drop links would be kind of like this. So it's a lot of, a lot of inward force would be being applied to the anti-roll bar as it comes up, because obviously whenever you're pushing through a rod like that, you're not just getting the vertical component, you're also gonna be shoving the end of the anti-roll bar in, and it's just not designed to take that kind of load. So, we're going to have to either make a new anti-roll bar or lengthen this one or figure something else out. Um, but I think we're going to have to make that a problem for another day. Now, making that problem even trickier is the fact that to solve it, we need the car on the ground with the alignment fixed. Now, to put it on the ground, we're loading up all the bearings with wheel weight and car weight. And to stop the bearings from egging under compression, we're just going to pop these drive shafts in. Now, this drive shaft is in perfectly good condition, perfectly serviceable, but unfortunately, totally useless for us because of our aforementioned widened track. So we're going to pop this in, which gives us a convenient chance to, one, get the wheel back on and get it on the floor, and also to demonstrate to you just how screwed we are by having widened it.
So now that we've installed our passenger side drive shaft, we've, we've tightened it all up on the hub. So the hub nut is on in place and we've preloaded all the bearing in there. So that's all solid. But you can see this gap where, yeah, this gap where my finger is right now should not be a gap. This should be a face-to-face -face mounting of the drive shaft to the diff. Unfortunately, we've already extended the two CV joints. There's actually quite a lot of like slop where you can extend and, comp and compress those CVs. We fully, fully extended them to try and cover this gap. But even with that, there's still, I don't know, probably like a two centimeter gap or so. Now you can apparently get drive shaft spacers, which a bit like wheel spacers, they just take up some of this space. But given that the CV joints are already extended, we'd probably need like 30 or 40 mil or something insane. And that probably feels like it's pushing our luck a little bit. So lengthening the drive shaft seems like the right thing to do here. Um, we're not showing you the driver side one because we've actually taken off a transfer case here. So the driver side shaft only actually comes out to about here, which is kind of not really worth showing. It's just a massive, massive gap. So that one, we actually have to get like a full custom shaft made up probably. Uh, but we will still put the wheel end of it in place for the same reason, just to protect the bearing when we get the car loaded up on the ground again. Now, unfortunately, for a whole bunch of different reasons, that is all we can get done in this episode. We'd love to get it on the floor and get the alignment done, but we do have, still have a few more things to do underneath the car. And crucially, we don't actually have working front hubs at the minute. We've got the uprights, but we don't have bearings. So the front wheels aren't going on the ground. And without them on the ground, there's not really a lot of point putting the back on the ground. And if you don't want to miss that episode coming out, do make sure to subscribe down below, enable notifications, like the video if you liked it, or I guess if you didn't like it and just want to like bump our numbers up a bit, we'd appreciate that too. Comment down below with what you thought of the build so far and if you're a bit sad that we haven't got it back on the ground. And you can also jump on shop.pedalbox.show to support us by buying any of our swanky merch. We've got hats, mugs. I nearly called that a hoodie for some reason. Not sure what, quite what happened there. We've got stickers. And also, if you want to fund our new 3D printing addiction, you should, by the time this episode goes out, be able to buy these swanky little pedal box keychains that we make on site. And now finally, as a gift to our future selves, in the interest of keeping our garage a bit clear, because it's quite full at the minute, we're going to try and get some parts back in the car and pack down for the day. We'll see you next time.